for a hunk of fat and juicy meat. Eat my buddy Pumba here because he has a treat. Come and down a dine. Hunter Stacy's fine. All you have to do is eat. Greetings, my fellow honey hoarders. I'm Brandon the Bammy Man, and welcome to Golden Ticket Reviews, where if it's classic or crap you see through it, I review it. A while back on my show, I spotlighted the pilot episode of a cartoon series that was an essential part of my childhood, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which is a show I still really simply enjoy watching to this day to relive that nostalgic feeling of being five or six years old. Good times. Good times. The first episode actually held up surprisingly well, as I found out, offering such grand info on life such as... Sometimes movie monsters eat whole countries and spit out the pits. And also taught that carrots can be rather terrifying. I Die carrot! Every man for himself! Comedy! Well, believe it or not, there was an episode that came out after that one which proved there can be much more weirder things than the guy who invented the artificial heart voicing a bouncing tiger in a carrot costume. Well, almost that weird. This is the piglet who would be king. We open up with a box flinging around as we find our lovable bear friend is inside with a jack-in-the-box stuck on his head. He accidentally breaks off the spring and decides to give said spring to his good old pal piglet, who at this time is busy figuring out where to hang a picture in his house, and it hilariously gets stuck over his head. Ooh, watch out! Come in. Hello, Piglet, my very best friend. Why, hello, Pooh Bear. That is a very interesting shirt you're wearing today. You know, it's always the little guys who look picture perfect. Or should I say, Piglet perfect? Great, now my hand is becoming self aware gives Piglet his friendship gift and takes off after only staying a few seconds. I make tea quicker than that. But Rabbit and Tigger get shocked when they learn Piglet has in no way prepared to give Pooh a friendship gift in return. However, Piglet retaliates by deciding to give him a jar of honey. Seems friendly to me. But Lenny and Squiggy Ears suggest he should give him lots of honey to show how much his friend means to him. But, but th this is all the honey I have. Not to worry. Yeah, you just stick with us. <laughs> Please, if he stuck with you, then Piglet's big movie couldn't have happened. They begin by having Piglet climb a tree to ask Soldier Bee for some honey. It doesn't go as planned. Therefore, they decide to go borrow some honey from their fellow Hunter Digger Wood compatriots. Spoilers, doesn't bode well. Okay, any more honey, bunny boy? <laughs> Voila! <laughs> I ruin Pooh's friendship gift. Apparently, these animals like to follow the Stuart Little rule and let the small man carry giant pots full of heavy liquid value. Gee, I hope this isn't what happened during the gold rush, because several miners would be pissed. But Tigger comes up with an ingenious notion. See, when he was a kitten, Tigger is feline? I knew it! His mom told him about this place called the Land of Milk and Honey. So they decide to go towards the path of the jungle on a daring expedition to find it and get honey. Musical number time! We're well on our way to wherever we're going, but that's neither here nor there. Cause when we arrive, we're certain to find a gift beyond compare. That's right, bunny boy. We're off to a river, to hither or tither or yawn. We're headed right toward that perfect reward that Pooh's been counting on. Well, thank God for fast forward motion. They come across one of the rejected actors from Roger Rabbit who's on a laughing jag. <laughs> oh, you're, you're the funniest thing I've ever seen! <laughs> oh, does this suit come with two pair of pants? <laughs> mm, looks just dandy to me. <laughs> this animal's one taco short of a combination plate. How do you... Tacos? Well, since this guy is no help, let's cut back to Paddington's red-shirted relative trying to wonder why no honey or piglet is around. Or we can head back to Dr. Seuss's Lost Rainforest where our heroes happen upon a literal band of monkeys. The place you're looking for is under the volcano. 
Yeah, we should have known. These adventures always got volcanoes in them. At least your name isn't Joe, then you wouldn't stand a chance. They finally come across this mystical land of both the whitest milk and the orangiest of honeys. Well, best not to wander into this place all rude like. Best knock on the door first. Say, that's quite a doorbell. Hey, boy, they must really hate salesmen. <gasps> Cannabibbles! Eat! I've got a, uh, I, I got a, uh, whatever it is, and I'm not afraid to use it. Hey, <laughs> that's no cannabibble. It's a pygmy piglet. Ooh. Ooh. Pygmy Piglet. I'm both confused and also quite curious. Let's see where this goes. Because Piglet brought this spring, which is considered by these mini hogs as the sacred pigtail, he is considered to be their king. And because it's a cartoon in the Disney Golden Era, naturally his friends are eager to have him stay while they be his royal lieges, so to speak. But to instate his king, good I guess, he must give up Pooh Bear's present to help the honey flow once more to the land. You mean you want me to give up my present from Pooh? Well, that is, if you d don't mind. Relax and act kingy. Stop swinging that tail around like you're the cat who knows where it's at. Robert, it's not like him to be on at home at lunchtime. <laughs> God bless you, Jim Cummings. You, you're just a blessing to kids and adult children everywhere. Pooh pulls the Santa routine again and mistakenly thinks he sees honey napper tracks. Those nectar nincompoops. Meanwhile, on Game of Scones, Tigger is busy teaching the little ones how to bounce all over the place while Rabbit is giving the gift of gardening to the young ones. Piglet looks on and contemplates what to do next, just as Tigger and Rabbit are building statues of themselves. But I don't want any statues. Shh, they don't know that. Besides, they love doing things for you. But people should do nice things for their friends, not because they have to, but because they want to. What? Yeah, I'm not making light of a good lesson being taught. They decide to finally head home, while Tigger makes off with Piglet's present. Meaning the volcano of honey has erupted and they need a plan fast. This calls for a small dose of... He's also quite handy with a tea body. That old gray I had last time in his place was simply the bun. <laughs> well, let's see how Yogi the Honey Lover is doing. They shall not pass. Who goes there? Clearly your Gandalf impression needs some work. That and he needs to start locking his back door. Well, let's see a nice gift giving in progress. Piglet, you didn't have to get me anything. Your friendship is enough. Oh, thank you, Pooh. But I'd hate to see it go to waste. Oh, it won't, Pooh. <laughs> it won't. Well, aside from the fact that my copy seems to have skipped a word of dialogue, that's very handy, this was simultaneously one of the weirdest and so funniest things I have ever reviewed, in my opinion. Honestly, if you're a Piglet fan like me, I say give this episode a watch. Sure, it's more random than a lot of other cartoons at that time, but hey, what do you expect when your hero is a stuffed bear? I have a feeling this episode can only be summed up in one single solitary phrase. Sometimes, Pooh Bear, you really amaze me. Well put, Ken Sansom. Until next time, I'm the Pooh Bear Critic and I eat up movies because you don't. Wait, that wasn't my line. Dang it, I screwed this ending up. Oh, bother.
I make all the girls big scream and shout. The Mac Daddy Hog representing the swine. Throwing up big power cause the power's all mine. That old gray I had last time in this place was simply the bind. <laughs> do this. <laughs> Simply the bind. <laughs> what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me, guys? What? I think I just did a major uh-oh.